this video, I'll be going over how a battle can be OP and do insane damage and DPS with your team comp with certain builds coming right up. Hey, what's cracking? It's your boy Aiden. I'm gonna pick a random subscriber that commented and liked my last video. Congrats, you just won $10. So we finally got Albedo and Genshin Impact 1.2 update with the Dragon Spine being up. Yesterday I had the privilege to summon Albedo at 20 rolls while doing live and I did some Albedo testing throughout yesterday. He is a very interesting character and I feel like Albedo is going to get a lot of love but some will dislike him as well. The thing about Albedo is that his kit is very interesting and brings a new type of playstyle that some of you guys might really enjoy. After a few testing and playing around with him for a day, I came to a conclusion that his build needs to be supported with defense because his E scales off of defense. I don't like how a character needs constellation to be better and it feels like Albedo needs that constellation too for his Q to be scaling off defense too. So it becomes a situation where it's kind of hard to decide what build to go for if you are going constellation zero like me now for his skills his e ability is really nice this e ability is like official's bird where you place the geo construct and it stays out in the field for 30 seconds with four second cooldown this e ability is so nice because you can use albedo like how you use official Place the E, use the Q, and switch away to your main DPS and continue to do damage while the E ability will do continuous blossom damage. Any character that can impact while not being out on the floor is always going to be a great character and because of this, I find it hard to not give him the props. Albedo fits really well with the design 4 characters from the current banner. I am using Fischl, Bennett, Albedo, and replacing Sucrose with Venti for this example. Albedo's E ability seems to work so well causing massive elemental reactions. You can see that Fischl's E and Albedo's E is always doing damage without needing any of the characters in the field. Combining that with Bennett's Q for damage increase and Venti's Q to suck all the monsters together, it does insane elemental reactions and massive damage. Albedo's E ability also creates an elevator so you can use it to do plunge damage. You can see how I am using Razor to do more DPS using plunge attack. Albedo's Q ability is very bursty as well if you have constellation zero like me this q ability is not going to scale off his defense so in order for this ability to do a lot of damage you need to go for a regular build of building attack crit rate and crit damage the 40 energy and 12 second cooldown makes it so that albedo gets his Q back so fast that every 12 seconds he should have his Q ability back and therefore making Albedo one of the best support bursty character possibly even better than official. I know a lot of people are rating official as S tier. I wonder where Albedo goes into in the tier list. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to grow your Genshin Impact characters and be the best at it, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss me when I go live. Quickly going over Albedo's talents here. For his normal attacks, he does 5 consecutive strikes. His normal attacks doesn't do that much damage. So it seems like you're wasting DPS if you use Albedo for normal and charged attacks. However, if you use Albedo's E, you use the elevator to go up and do plunge damage, it's gonna do pretty decent damage. So this is something that you should be doing or you should try to do. Where Albedo really shine is the e ability here and what this does is it, it creates a geo construct and it does aoe geo damage when you cast it you can aim the place and it's going to do skill damage geo damage and quite frequently when you attack or use other skills with albedo or other characters when you switch out it will do continuous transient blossom damage and it's going to do 214 percent of his defense so this is where it feels like you need to build defense around albedo so that you can continuously do a lot of this transient blossom damage a lot of the damage from my battle is going to come from this transient blossom damage so this is reason why you should actually stack defense the duration for this ability is for 30 seconds which is a very long time and the skill cooldown is for four seconds so you can really spam it right you can spam this do extra skill damage every time you spam it and it's going to do continuous blossom damage this is the reason why solar isotoma is one of the best e-skill that you can have as a support it's kind of like Fischl's 
bird, but this is like a geo construct and it does continuous geo damage, doing a lot of elemental reactions. Now looking at its Q skill called the Tectonic Tide, it does bursty damage here, 514% at level 6, and it does Fatal Blossom damage which does a lot or creates a lot of fatal blossoms and does 100% each the cooldown is for 12 seconds and the energy cost is sporty so you're really looking to use his Q ability much often as you can because the cooldown is so low energy cost is so low and the E is going to be up all the time just doing damage all the time when you're fighting enemies whether you're auto attacking with a better or not or using your main DPS character, his E ability is going to be out on the floor all the time. Creating energy recharge for him, even though he's not out on the floor, he's still going to continuously get energy recharge. Therefore, his Q is going to be up almost every cooldown. So you're just looking to spam his Q ability and kill everything using his E ability. For Constellation 1, every time he uses his E ability and transient blossoms are generated, it's going to increase his energy regen for a better, which is going to be nice. So he can spam his Q much quicker. Constellation 2 is where I feel like Albedo is going to shine much more because every time Transmuting Blossoms are generated by his E ability which is quite often, he's going to get increased damage by 30% of Albedo's defense and he can stack up to 4 times and when so when, the, when he gets all these stacks which is of increased damage which is going to be by Albedo's defense and when he uses Q ability which is the tectonic tide it's going to consume all the stacks and when he uses it it's going to do way more damage so this is why I said that his Q is going to stack with Albedo's defense this is because of the constellation 2 for constellation 4 his E ability is going to increase punch attack for all party members within the AOE which is going to be nice possibly for characters that's going to do massive planet attacks it seems like Sao is going to fit perfectly with Albedo because of this and the 6 constellation makes so that everybody's going to do increased damage up by 17% which is a very good damage increase I feel like Albedo can be really good with constellation 2 the only problem is that I like to build characters with constellation 0 and to see if they are OP or not it seems like with constellation 2 it makes Albedo really that much better because you can really focus on defense increasing his E ability and his Q ability if not with constellation zero you can still make him work and that's how i'm trying to do with this current build right now the best artifact set for a battle is going to be noblesse oblige because it's going to increase his elemental burst damage by 20 percent and every time he uses his elemental burst ability it's going to increase everyone's attack by 20 percent and you're really looking to spam his q ability as much as you can so every 12 seconds you want to spam it and use it and that's why it feels like noblesse oblige is probably going to be one of the best artifact set. The other artifact set that's going to be good on Albedo is the Archaic Petra set. Two piece bonus is going to get 15% geo damage bonus. The four piece set is going to have create this kind of shield depending on which elemental reaction you create causing elemental shard to be created and the party member is going to get 35 percent damage bonus on that particular element for 10 seconds so arcade picture seems like a good option so what you can do is you can go two piece arcade picture and two piece noblesse oblige or four piece noblesse oblige four piece arcade petra that seems like best artifact sets for a battle now for the artifacts that I did use on my Albedo in this video is 2-piece Bloodstain and 2-piece Noblesse. The reason I use these is because I wanted to stack much defense as I can. This is not the ideal set to go for. Obviously, I would opt in for 4-piece Noblesse or 2-piece Archaic and 2-piece Noblesse or 4-piece Archaic. For the feather here, I have attack, defense, crit damage, and crit rate, and elemental mastery. So these four are literally what you're looking for. You're looking for defense, and you're trying to stack defense as much as you can while stacking crit damage and crit rate. And if you get elemental mastery, that's going to be good. For the flower here, I have HP, crit rate, defense, defense percentage, and crit damage. This is an ideal artifact literally for Albedo. This is what you're literally looking for. For the hourglass, I have defense percent. HP, crit rate, crit damage, and attack. For the hourglass though, this is a situation where you're either gonna go defense or you're gonna go attack percent in the beginning. If you opt in for attack percent, then you're looking to do a lot more damage with this Q. 
If you go for defense, you're gonna be doing more damage with your E. If you have constellation 2 with Albedo, then it's optimal to go for defense percent. If you want to do more damage with the E, like how I'm doing, and I feel like that's how you should use Albedo, it seems like with the hourglass defense percent, it's going to be ideal situation. For the cup, it's optimal to go geo damage bonus here because your E and your Q is going to be doing geo damage. So here you should opt in always for geo damage bonus. And again, and if you can stack defense and defense percent that's going to be the best option obviously you want to have crit damage and crit rate here as well for the helm you want to go crit damage and possibly if you can get defense percent and some crit rate that's going to be the best optimal situation for albedo for this video showcase i did use a kulafabonia level 5 sword this sword is good because it has high base attack i feel like this sword is not good on albedo it doesn't increase its E damage whatsoever. It does when you place the E and that first damage that it creates with the E because of the high base attack, it's going to do some damage and its Q as well. But transient blossom damage is proc or used and scales off his defense. So this sword is not the best sword with Albedo. The best sword is going to be Bestering Desire. This sword is going to be the best because you're looking to have energy recharge in his base stack and stack this so that Albedo can spam his Q all the time. And this increases elemental skill damage and the skill crit rate by 6% and if this is refined it's going to be doing more damage. Blastering Desire is going to be the best weapon for Albedo. This is the go-to weapon and this weapon is free and this weapon has some kind of like buff in this event so I feel like going for Blastering Desire is going to be the best option. Basically any energy recharge weapons are going to be good on Albedo. Maybe the Black Sword can be okay because it does have crit rate and the black cliff because it has crit damage. In case you missed my latest video, it should pop up here. Make sure to come check me out in live stream and I'll be answering all of your questions, particularly in your individual needs. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.